We love music, and we can't wait till Friday rolls around and Spotify releases their best new music. We can listen to it. But how does your brain and body react to music? Well, we're actually here with our friend Sam Sutherland today from the channel This Exists, and why don't you tell us what we're doing today? We are going to be listening to a bunch of different genres of music while trying to describe what is happening in your brain and in your body. Okay, so what is your favorite song, Mitch? Um, I think my favorite song is by a band called Cigarose, which is my favorite band, and the song is called Glossily. One of the obvious answers when I was thinking about it was Buddy Holly by Weezer. I saw them play this summer, and I was like, this is a song I have loved my entire life. It's a perfect pop song. It has like eight different hooks at various <laughs> points, and it makes me so stoked when I hear it. What about you? Uh, so mine is Unraveled by Bjork, which is really funny because oh, both of these people oh, are Icelandic <laughs> and they have like a population of like 300,000 people. So obviously they're very creative. One of the reasons we love our favorite jams so much is the familiarity. The way we crave to hear a particular song makes sense when we consider that the part of our brain that anticipates pleasure releases dopamine just before our favorite part of a song. Such a gifted man. When we hear a song that we love, the reward centers of our brain are much more active than if it's a song we're not familiar with. So when we hear a new song, the cortical structures of our brain involved in pattern recognition, musical memory, and emotional processing are looking for similarities. Uh, Lady Gaga, who we all know and love, mm -hmm. uh, has yeah. faced some criticism, some criticism, <laughs> despite her queen status, <laughs> as being very similar sometimes to Madonna. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like a lost Madonna song, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and what's the song it sounds like? Express yourself. Oh, yeah. Madonna, right? Like yeah. the exact, like that song is the exact same. But if it's too different, too dissimilar, we will often not like it. So this is this is forty three percent burnt by Dillinger Scott. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I really, really, really don't. I, I like. I know immediately that I won't like this song. But yeah. you do like this song. I love this song. It gives me like energy, like it makes me, as it's happening, I'm literally like, So one of the ways that people might describe a band like this is called a math core. Like, I, I always think about people step. on like the subway who are listening like really intensely, yeah. like, just being like, hmm. but it's like, oh, no. It's that similarity and familiarity that makes popular music so popular. A project conducted by two Rutgers students examined the Billboard Hot 100 and the songs that had peaked between number one and number 10, and found that almost all of them were a medium pace, 120 BPM. They were written in a major key, they were danceable, and they were all about four and a half minutes long. And with the music industry being so potentially profitable, it's valuable to know what works, which is not just familiarity in terms of song structure, but also familiarity in terms of hearing a song a lot. You might not like a song the first time you hear it, but enough times on the radio and it gets in your brain and you love it. Trying to tap into those familiar emotions can be a real tightrope for pop songwriters. It's how you end up embroiled in lawsuits, like Marvin Gaye's estate successfully suing Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke over their song Blurred Lines, which sounds a lot like Gotta Give It Up. Or how Sam Smith was forced to fork over his royalties for the song Stay With Me because it sounded an awful lot like Tom Petty's Won't Back Down. But though pop music may be more popular, other genres of music that have more unique pieces may create a more lasting love. What is this? It's nice, like I really like Yeah, no, it. immediately I'm like, I would. It sounds do like a movie soundtrack. Yeah. There are so many amazing genres of music, and we all have different tastes. This is largely based on our personal history, which can affect how our neurons are wired. So many different memories and emotions tied up in music, and it might have to do with mirror neurons. Neurons that allow us to experience internally what we witness externally. So when someone is pouring out their heart and soul in a song, we are right there with them, experiencing those same emotions. <laughs> it turns out that your taste in music could actually predict your personality. A study from the University of Texas looked at 60 students and found that you could actually see what their personalities were based on the playlist that they listened to. This is called Florida Georgia Line. <laughs> So that did nothing for me. <laughs> that like, I agree. Yeah, that yeah. one. Some country songs I can get down with, but like, like you know, Nico Shania Case. Twain. <laughs> yeah, Shania Twain. But um, not so much that. Dude. Yeah. There is a dark part of me that thinks that that is an amazing song. Like yeah. So if apparently, you like Sam, country music? western music, it means that you're outgoing and hardworking. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. 
I guess those are good things to be. So yeah, good job. Yeah. Like, you know, working out in the country. I'm shy and lazy, so that's why I want to do that. <laughs> uh, the studies have shown that fans of dance music are uh, creative and outgoing, but not gentle. <laughs> Which, like, that Fair song enough. is... That, I would, that I would think that I like dance music and I, I run into walls all the time and break stuff all the time. Yeah, you're like not a yeah. gentle so Maybe human, I'm not but gentle. You are not yeah. gentle. <laughs> it makes me want spaghetti. <laughs> it, ma it makes me feel rich, which I like. <laughs> I think um, that people who like opera have yeah. a very high self-esteem, as yeah. the study found. Uh, and that they are gentle. But even though we like different music, it lights up in the same way in our brain. So if you're listening to an iconic song like Bohemian Rhapsody, for example, an fMRI scan would show the same thing across two brains, even though those people might be having different reactions. Just like our brain waves sync up to music, so does our heart. Participants were exposed to parts of Beethoven, Bach, Puccini, and other classical artists, along with two minutes of silence, while monitors recorded physiological signals. The research found that crescendos led to an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, and respiration, while these measures decreased during decrescendos and silence, meaning that listening to music might help keep our cardiovascular system in tune. Science is continually uncovering more and more about how music affects us, further making us realize how amazing it is. Sam, did you have fun today? I had a blast. Thank you for listening to Difficult Metalcore with me. All right, no yeah, if you guys like Sam and want to check out his channel, you can click it here. It's called This Exists, or we'll put a link in the description as well. And we'll see you next time. Peace.